Hello, this is Help, I Sexted My Boss. We're here to help you navigate the challenges of modern life. You can send your tales of trepidation to help... No, you still can't say it. <laughs> now, I brought along... Uh, now we're talking. ...a little drink for us to have. Yep. You'll notice uh, a bottle of gin, and then we have a bottle of Dubonnet. Don't clink glasses. OK, you don't clink. Oh, that's delicious. William Hansen farted. He farted in front of me and Ben, and it was so loud and abrupt and manly, and me and Ben just didn't know where to look. It's like when your nan farts. We just didn't know I what to do. I didn't know what it was. It was a new sensation. <laughs> and it's, it's taken me a while to get used to this. So we're now with the track side again, but this on the is, other side. Yeah, this is James Argreaves stand, or the long side. The James Argreaves? Yeah. We are the long side, Burnley. 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 Uh, Not on the napkin. All right, it's fine. Shut up. You're making a scene. Why are they having... I'm making a scene. Hang on, why are they having champagne and we're on bloody tea? It's Saturday afternoon. Let's get on it, don't we? I don't know what vabbing is. I don't know what vabbing. Oh! It's like you... Oh! And then proceeds to dab on a little bit of her natural scent. Oh, I had a gay ghost in my room and you... <laughs> they put the willies up me. You not heard that one? <laughs> well, I've learned that you like gin and Dubonnet, which which opens up. I love gin and Dubonnet. Good. I, I really do. I, I, I would I would definitely drink that again. I can see there's nothing left in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> not even joking. I just felt like there was a, a bloke in my bed, and it really freaked me out. I felt like one night it touched me. I'm not <laughs> even joking. <laughs> off now guys we've got the caretaker and everything and <laughs> here we go hello and welcome to the help i sex and my boss fifth birthday live stream Yay! this is the podcast where since the 20th of march 2018 we've been helping you navigate the challenges of modern life answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas like have we really changed in the last five years and is it ever too late to ask for your potato peeler back? And, of course, what should you do if you've accidentally sexed your boss? But we're not your usual agony ants, are we? William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert. Oh, thank you. That's lovely. No, we're not Jordan North, radio and now television presenter. No one's <laughs> <down. laughs> You set of shit. Yeah. Are we allowed to swear? Are we uh, allowed to swear? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, I think, okay. I think we sorry. are. How funny. No, we're, we're trying that again, shall we? And for the edit, they'll put this in. Um, no, we're not Jordan North, radio and now television presenter. Yeah! <laughs> Slightly. I think they're, they're distracted by something else. Um, I'm more stream of consciousness. You're more stream of piss. Wow, OK. And thanks to Luke for sending that in about ten minutes ago. I was going to say, instead, I was going to say uh, what I said to you the very first I'm more, you're more, yeah. which was not... Fun fact, uh, was not in the very first uh, episode. It took until episode four for us Ooh. to do I'm All Oh, Yours. really? Yes, one oh. for the, the factoid oh, fans. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, we're like chalk and cheese. I'm a roublochon, you're a dairy lee. Is that, was that the first one? Yes, that was the first one. It didn't even rhyme. I've still not had a roublochon since. Have you not? No. Oh, we should get you one. Is that like Port Salut or...? It's a slightly more at market one. Right, let's start with a drink. We've loads to talk about. We've loads to do. Thanks so much for joining us if you're on the live stream. Hello. I don't know what camera to wave at, but hello. Yeah. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll be here for about uh, an hour and a bit. Really? What? It'll be a bit just I've, over I've an hour. I've been for five hours. Well, what's on at eight o'clock? I don't, we've only just started. William's been here since two o'clock this afternoon. Four o'clock. But anyway. It just takes that long to do the makeup. Come on, let's have a, should we have a drink? Yes, and look, because it's our fifth birthday, I shall allow you to do, with the new bottle of De Bonnet, Oh, really? Okay. I shall allow you to do the joke. Um, now, for those that haven't had a gin and De Bonnet before, it's one part gin, two parts De Bonnet. Or two parts gin, two parts De Bonnet. Yeah. Jordan does a joke. 
Oh, oh. William's ass. <laughs> You've had a good week. Thank you so much. Well, it's been five years. So. <laughs> You've had a good five years. <laughs> Not surprising. Right, I would like to toast, please, all the G&D and anyone who has listened to us for five minutes or for five years. This one is for you. So, thank you, everyone. To our wonderful listeners. No clinking. Cheers. Because clinking gallery, clinking is... Common! Thank you. Phew, they got that one right. It's like a shit TFI Friday, this <laughs> with every background, isn't it? <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Mm. Mm. It's nice to have ice. We've had an ice uh, machine in the studio for the entire time that we've been here. We've only just worked out how to turn it on. Why, what are you looking at? Sucks. How long has that ice been in there for? No, no, we've just done it today. Oh, yeah, it won't be in there for five years, will it? No. It's melted. No, and it's only been in this studio for about oh, okay. a year. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, fine. What do you think of our new studio? It's good, yeah. Are it's people really loving nice. it on the, on the comments? Yeah. Are they loving it? It's so nice of uh, Stuart and Ben to recreate the sauna that we first met in, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> which is nice. It's really, and look, we've got moving images. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's great. It's like really, really good word art, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I'm sure Ollie is delighted. Sorry, Ollie. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ollie. Thank you. Um, right. I've got to say, I'm a bit nervous because we've said this before on our live shows, but we usually edit quite a lot out of the main episodes that you'll hear and that you'll and listen it's to. it's mainly said by Jordan. It's mainly said down by me. So um, I'll say, oh, we need to cut that. Or I'll say during it, cut that, edit that. Yeah. Or we'll, we listen back um, usually a couple of days before the, the edit goes out on a Tuesday and I'm always like, Do you that. really, though, still listen? Yeah, I would listen back. You, your, your comments normally come once we've released an episode. Yeah, yeah just to keep you all on your toes. <laughs> but um, so I'm nervous tonight because I'm like, I don't want to get cancelled. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fine. So, But other let's, than that, we'll be all right. Let's see if we can push that. It says here, messages from Gene Divas. I'll get my laptop out oh, then, Oh, okay. Shall I? I'll get my iPad. Oh, no, okay. Well, we, do, we could show... Oh, oh is he here? Oh, are you coming? No? Okay, sorry, Gene Divas. We did do a rehearsal, a quick one before. But... Oh. Is uh, that, oh, no. Live is that what you're into? Is it live... Sh <laughs> is that what you're shut into? Up. I don't know. Daddies and bears. Oh, shut up. Wow. Hairy, hairiness. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, okay. We're sharing. Hello, Ben. Hi, Ben. I'm sure... YouTube comments have now exploded because Ben's walked right. on the screen. Uh, Teresa's in Perth, Western Australia, and she set an al alarm for 3 a.m. And she says, don't care that I'm working in the morning. I have my D and I can't wait. Fair enough. And good day, Teresa. Pop there the D on the Barbie. Pop the D on the Barbie. Uh, this is a nice one from, it's either from PLN. Not got your five, glasses. No, from PLN 5000. Uh, this is a comment that I put some photos on um, Instagram over the weekend, and they commented saying, Gay ghost, watermelon love, the legend that is Sarah Hansen, hi guys, PB, William's bad coffee, Jordan's many tales of his youth, uh, potato peelers, jokes of the week, so many etiquette tips, the barber's tip, no apostrophe, Monaco, Duchy of Cornwall Ferry, and so much more. Marvellous to reach five years. I think I, I came on board about four years ago. Still never been to a live event, though. Um, congratulations, William, Ben, uh, Jordan, and Stu, with his house on the hill. So much content. And then my favourite bit, I never did listen to Jess Phillips or become a teacher, mind <laughs> you. <laughs> Those are the adverts that were yes. on forever. Oh, get into teaching. Um, that was during lockdown, weren't it? I think so, yes. I think yeah. more, actually, we put people off getting into teaching, yeah. if I'm honest. We did that. We basically did, them, we did an advert, but it was a full free episode they got. <laughs> uh, Julie Horton says, I have binged five years in six months. Ooh, wow. wow. I'll be watching with my G&D. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Super Sam Sandy says, I keep telling myself uh, to get through this afternoon at work, and then you have the live stream tonight. I'm so looking forward to it. Thank, thank you, you. Super Sam, and thank you for all your lovely and wonderful yes. pictures that you send us. Yeah. Rob Laycock... Lucky Rob says, well... <laughs> You've done a funny. Nice <laughs> that was idea. quite good for me. sure he's never heard that before. Uh, it says, well, I'm all set for Sex and My Boss live stream with Jordan North and William Hansen tonight. And he's got Gordon's gin and uh, he's got De Bonnet and he's got some miniature heroes in the background there. That's lovely. And David White has uh, tweeted us a photograph of his picky tea. It's an array of beige food that are going to clog up your arteries. And talking... Oh, only spelt Diego wrong as well. But never mind. Talking of which, I went out shopping for our own picky tea. Have you done the picky tea? I have. Now, I, I did say I was going to put a word in with m and but... Um, you didn't. I did. I forgot. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's as simple as that. Is that all we've done for the comments? That's so. all for now. We'll okay. Come, we'll come there you go, Ben. There you go. Are, are you sure? Yeah. All right. This is what we have to part with. 
It's like a moody teenager. Well, I don't think that was unreasonable. <laughs> um, would you like to see what I've got? Yes, please. Um, the bag, by the way, mm. uh, I had a salad before we ate, and then I went. Is to... that because I've given you a weird flex now about what I said? Yeah, there's a clip that's gone on our social media today of uh, Jordan fat shaming me. No, I wasn't. I, I don't say was. that. Don't say that. Fair. I wasn't. Anyone from the Lancashire Evening Post is listening and wants to do the article? It's, no, it's the Lancashire Telegraph. Oh, it was the Lancashire Telegraph. Lancashire I'm sorry. Evening Post is the Preston one. Oh, is it? Yeah, and then oh. there's the Burnley Express. Anyway, come on, let's have a look at your picture. So the bag, it's from M&S, but my salad was from Tost. I was Tost earlier. The jokes write themselves. <laughs> and so it's been waiting for that one all afternoon. No, I've got some Italian smoked antipasto selection. Oh, have you been to M&S for it? Yes. Oh. Now, hear me out. I'm not keen on that ham. It's a bit... It's a bit hammy. It's funny, that. It's quite... It's t What's it called? Parma ham? Uh, well, I think that's a type of prosciutto. I don't know how people fight, feel about us eating on the... I, I'm, not, I'm going to eat in the break. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Are we having a break? We are now. Um, and then there's some classic hummus. Oh, classic hummus. However... <laughs> that however. was a really good one for me, but no one <laughs> laughed. <laughs> classic hummus. Oh, what's he like? Classic hummus. I don't really <laughs> guess it, <though. laughs> You know, like if I did something, go classic Jordan. What's <laughs> I mean, that sort of humour might cut it on Radio One. You've got to try a bit harder here. Oh, um, classic hummus. I did, however, <laughs> three times now. Just sorry, just in case you didn't get it. I did, however, buy nothing to dip into that, and I I realised that was an error. <laughs> so sorry. I've got to say, this is quite. I'm not impressed so far. Chicken. Mm. Chicken breast. I, hear me out. I don't like cold chicken, you know. Have you ever told you that? Do you like cold cheesy balls? I don't mind them cheesy balls. Yeah. Have some of those. Um, oh, I know you like these. Some uh, rolitos. I do like them. Thank yes. you. Bless you. And Ooh. then, because I thought we needed a bit of fibre. What sort of picky tea is this? Where's the smiley faces? The turkey dinosaurs? The hamwiches? Pomegranate. <gasps> oh, I found some... Um, Tesco's little cheese and ham wraps he did. I put them in the air fryer on Saturday when I got back from my nice. smiley faces. Lovely. Yeah. Can you mention that again? But Anton Deg. Yeah, just saying I was on it, that's all. Pomegranate. Oh, because I don't, I don't think enough picky teas have pomegranate or melon. That was the this other thing. This is not I the best picky tea, I'm not gonna lie to you. Well we've got we've got food. I don't think I've had pomegranate before. Oh it's lovely. Get stuck in your teeth though. Oh, does it? Don't finger it. Use the cutlery provided in the bag. I've now thrown <laughs> on the floor. Um. <laughs> Don't! Looks a bit like... T You're meant to swallow. Uh, it looks like frog spawn a bit. Like, Does it? it? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I've brought for us... Okay. You've brought stuff? Yeah, you remember I had a drink that I wanted to make our signature drink. Okay. It was uh, the Green Hulk, which was half a lager. Half a lager. Half a lager and half a WKD. Right. Well, there's a lot of Gene Divas that have brought to my attention um, an oil slick. An oil slick? Yeah. What, what it's, it's got a few that? different names. It's an oil slick. But apparently, it's half a Guinness and half a WKD. So I think with it being our fifth birthday... Well, I'm not having it. We have an oil slick. Right. Apparently. Oh, look, it's your, show off your Claridge's pint glass oh. that they gave you. That uh, was the glass at, our, at my wedding. So, apparently, mm -hmm. it's um, you put the WKD in first, which stands for people that drink it. Can but you we can't say that joke anymore, because five years ago it was a bit more <laughs> acceptable. So now it's for... Just be careful, because you've got... Uh, it stands for the people that drink it, wankers, kids and dickheads. Right, well, you've basically done the joke. No, 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 because <laughs> the, the other one was... Women. No, I never said that. I never said that. So shut up. That's that's not acceptable. Well, it's somewhere in the archive if the press wants to go and listen. No, it's just shut up. Sorry. Right. Okay. So you do. Can you see this? All right. So we do. This is what passes for entertainment in the north. So it's called an oil slick, and I think we should both try some. I'm not trying oh, any. I was absolutely raging yesterday. Right. So I'd worked all week. I yes. got back at 11 o'clock from Villa Ricky for Ant and Deck Saturday night takeaway. Twice. Twice as mentioned just before. Come and wrong. find me on the takeaway truck stop, ITV, 7 p.m. And um, I got back from Villa Ricky, and I got in late, and I thought, <laughs> you could win a I'm place on the plane. <laughs> I'm just thinking of all the jokes you can do with truck stop. <laughs> <laughs> what is so funny about that? Don't worry, I'll tell you off the live Why? stream. Why? Tell me now. No. Why? It's a rhyme. Truck stop. What rhymes with truck? Yeah. Oh, for God's sake. Is that it? Oh, God. 
cut that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, I was like, so basically, I said I'm really looking forward to McGuinness, right? Yes. And I went, um, and I went to the local on Sunday, looking forward to it all day. I'd been to the gym, I tidied house, I'd done my ironing for a week and everything, <laughs> right? So I went to and walked in, and it sold out because all pig and egg chasers. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> All rugby lads had been in on Saturday. Egg chasers. Yeah, the all lot. So I don't My mind. I, d- I don't mind the Six Nations actually. Sorry to any rugby fans watching. So all rugby fans had been in. It was England Ireland on Saturday. They were like, "Oh yeah, Henry, I'll have bloody Guinness. Oh, why not? No, no, no. All once a year is. Then on Friday it was Paddy's Day. So Sunday they sold out. Oh. So I had to go to shit pub across the road because you'll know if there's two pubs near you, you'll go in your pub and you'll be loyal to that. And the one down the road is always a bit crap. I had to have a Guinness in there. It weren't as good. So I've not had a proper Guinness all week. So I'm going to try this. So the idea... So why are you pouring it onto the spoon? I've just seen it on YouTube. Look at that. I don't know what that's doing. Watch. I'll show you in a minute. You just pour it. It's called an oil slick. Look at it. It's floating, William. It's floating. It's magic. You're like Debbie McGee. You're my assistant. For our younger listeners, (laughs) Google that. Look at that. That is... I've never done that before. Look at that. You're so pleased with yourself. Look at that. I mean, it's just a bit blue at the bottom because it hasn't dropped, but it's probably presumably because Guinness is lighter than WKD. I don't know. So we have a bit? And then you can do, you have sp- a bit. Do, you, do you stir it or sip it? Don't look at me. You've got to have a bit. I'm Come on, it's bit. our fifth birthday. I've, try- Come I've on. tried Guinness. You took me to the entire factory and I hated it. Shall I do my rude Guinness joke? Oh, <laughs> That's very rude. G and Divas, right? If you ever see me in a pub, get me a pint of Guinness and I will tell you the... Rudest joke you'll ever see in your life. You I think can't do that. I can't do it on here because I, I will get cancelled. But as long as you're not filming on your phones and you see me in a pub, just say, Jordan, do your Guinness joke. My dad told it once and Pilks, my best mate, was on the floor laughing. <laughs> Honestly. You loved that joke, Ben, didn't you? Right. Happy fifth birthday. Happy fifth birthday. It's going all over the table. Jordan. Oh. Do you get the WKD at the end? Mm. Yes. Oh, that's really nice. I don't know if it is. I'm sorry to everyone in Ireland right now. I really am. Yeah, well, St. Patrick's... Please just have a sip. Please just have... We... No, we're not doing that again. Because William is our mate. And when we drink with William, he downs his drinking eight. Not down again. Seven, six, five, four, three. Go on. One. Taste of mouthwash. Does it? Mm. It's a bit like your first time. Once it's in, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> okay, good. Well, we'll move on. Um, <coughs> Cut that. <laughs> um, should we talk about um, the new studio and my mother's reaction to oh, the new Oh, yeah, studio? so we've got a new studio. Should yes. we shift some of this now? So right? on Friday, I was meant to go and see them at the weekend, but for very, I mean, I went and saw them on Sunday, but I didn't see them on Friday and Saturday for very, various reasons. And uh, so I sent, I sent my mother a picture of the new studio because I said, oh, you know, we've had a new studio. It's all very exciting. First time we've seen it. So I sent her this photo and, uh, and this is what she said. So th- there we go. That was the photo I sent. Oh, she yeah. went, is this the before? <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, no. <laughs> No, that's the after with numerous exclamation marks. I can just imagine her on her phone like this. <laughs> Darling, is this the before? <laughs> and, um, oh, that's repeating on me. And um, anyway, so then I sent her the old sort of setup of the studio with the, the faux brick. And, uh, and she said, oh, yes, that looks like a cellar. <laughs> So that was my mother's take on. Oh, her, so Sarah our new doesn't and old. approve. I think no. I think she she realizes that we're in a better place now. Okay. Good. Yes. Anyway, how's your five years been? Oh, <laughs> well, how long have you got? Yeah. How it's, have how would you sum up your five years? It's been a funny old five years, hasn't it? It with has. A, with a pandemic. Yeah. Uh, what the kids call a panny D, I believe. Uh, so we've, can we get that away from us, please? That's where we we I felt like we started up in it a bit, where people. Started. Well, we had a lot of time on our hands. Yeah, well, but more people started listening. Because I was yes. thinking of packing it in. We literally pack- oh, had. Oh, sorry. A... I'm sorry? Nothing. <laughs> I'm joking. I wasn't. He was thinking of packing it no, in. I he wasn't. Was about to I say. wasn't no, you weren't. I you weren't. had no other work. No. Um, we were. Um, 
we had a captive audience, basically. Yeah. Uh, so that was nice. Uh, but no, it's it's been it's been nice. It's been a good five years. Yeah. I feel we've come into our own, which is a which is a talent. Yeah. Can you remember the first ever episode? <laughs> Can I remember the first ever episode? Yes. Five years ago today, of course, it went out on a Tuesday. That's mad, though. Your mad. voice, sounding as people have pointed out recently, sounds like you've been abducted by aliens. Yeah. If we, I said this before, if we had a kid four years ago, this podcast would be older. Yeah, I mean, that is how maths works. But it's mad to think that, like, if we had a child, not together, just saying, if we had a child at that time, that kid would be starting primary school now. Right. Does that not, does that just make, does that not blow your mind? No, not really. Five, we're nearly half a century old. Okay. Yeah. Well, there we go. Thank you. Half, no, we're not half a century. Sorry, half a decade. Half a decade. Half a decade old. <laughs> I knew something was wrong there. We're half a decade old. Yeah. Um, well, producer Ben has found the recording, the full, raw, unedited recording of the very first podcast. Are you really drinking that over to Bonnie? Um, it's actually really nice. Try okay. it. I has he actually? It. Yes, he has. And um, this audio now that we're going to we're going to share, and we haven't heard this yet, is straight after producer Ben pressed record for the very first time. When Ben says it's cool, he's livid. Uh, that's William Hansen, and if you didn't already guess, he's yeah, the one yeah. who knows the difference well. between a fork for I, I only have one ear on, so don't let it put you off. Some people at, in London find it a bit weird, because you know I'm deaf in one ear. You sound funny. Well, very funny. <laughs> Um, of course I know you're deaf. I know why you're in here. Rocky Femme paid me to go for some uh, speech therapy lessons, and that's one of the things she said. I thought it were a load of bollocks, if I'm honest. Speech yeah. therapy? Yeah. Because you don't notice I say think now instead of think. Yes, you do. Yeah, have you noticed? Well, that's good. Yeah, I went twice. She's actually, at first, I had a face like a bag of spanners, but I actually got to like her. And that was one thing that... Um, I can't hear in these headphones. Oh, 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 I can now. That's uh, William Hansen, and if you didn't, yeah, so that was jolly good. Uh, that's William Hansen, and if you didn't already guess, he's the one who knows the difference between a fork for your ice cream and a fork for your snails. I sound like Camp Young Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird. Well, you were certainly young. Was that the first ever thing? <laughs> was that the third? Why do we sound like we're in a? We now sound like we're in, in a the, in, in the a bath. fish tank. We're in the bath. Um, was that the first ever thing that was recorded? Apparently so. I also like the fact that in that. Uh, I said, I, or you said, I can't hear in my headphones. And about 15 minutes ago, we said, I'm a, can I be a little bit louder in my headphones? Yeah, so it's nice so to know we've progressed changed. over the last five years. Mm. Um, we've also got some feedback from Executive Deluxe producer Stuart. So I went away this week and had a look at um, the very first... E so, sorry, you you went, you went looked in your e inbox, did you? Yeah, <laughs> you know I did. I've right. prepped loads for this episode. Yes, you know. have. You've prepped more for this episode than you do for most episodes. Yeah, I've done yeah. loads of prep. So I went back and had a look in the email. I thought it would be a really good idea to um, have a look at the first ever email that we got sent from executive producer Stuart. Yes, with some feedback. With some feedback. From the head. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is from Stuart. Do you want me to do the impression? Yeah, go on. Okay, so this is from executive, who's caught his ad jacket, Stuart, <laughs> who's from Wales. Those are his okay. in words. <clears throat> He's put, I think that at points, the advice element of the podcast gets lost. <laughs> we should make sure that the helpful nature of you both comes through, especially who's caught his ad jacket at the beginning. <laughs> the interaction on those two houses on the hill should be <laughs> about people asking for help, not just you telling funny stories. <laughs> What do you make well, of that? How's that gone, Stuart, over the yeah. last five years? So Stuart didn't want it to be about us. He wanted it to more be about the dilemmas. Yes. Okay. Here we go. That's another good one. Okay. The more I look at the title written with a comma after help, the more I hate it. So I propose, I propose, we've, I propose we style this while you do the letters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take Cut. a deep breath. <laughs> use, use your phonics. Use your phonics. Don't get me knob out. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you phonics. You daft apeth. <laughs> daft apeth. Have you never heard that expression? No. Oh, don't worry. Uh, sorry. <coughs> so, I propose we've. Hmm. I suppose we stylized the title as Help, I Sexted My Boss. Then William shared his thoughts. Oh, am I reading yes, this? Yes, yes. Right, sorry. Christ. Um, 
love in capitals the edit with the music and the intro hilarious two spaces we must use that in one of the episodes we put out agree with all of the below two See, spaces you have no backbone you that's your problem what <laughs> on Stuart's side already well we're both Virgos oh okay um, well that makes sense yeah we I'm ag- joking you don't have a backbone I know I do I know Mikey's Thanks. told me Agree with all the below. Rename would help! Exclamation mark. I've sexed my boss work. Um, rather than a comma. Just a thought, but happy with no punctuation, even if it's bad grammar. <laughs> That's your passive aggressiveness <laughs> right there. <laughs> we'll draft a standard response for when we get letters from the grammar Nazis. Wow. 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 There we go. And then the, uh, it took a full day for Jordan, who was not working at the time, to come in with his perspective. And he said, Hi all. I'll have a good listen to no, it today. Do it in your voice back then. Don't Hi, all. I'll have a good listen to it today and get back to you all. <laughs> Cheers. Kiss, kiss. And producer Ben stayed silent. Yeah. So um, that was five years ago, and we were at very different stages in our lives. I was living in my mum and dad's box room. Yeah, I was the talent. It, you still are. But yeah, um, I, I was living at home. I was unemployed. Yes. This was like, my, I was doing bits for Radio 1, and I'd just left Rock FM. Like making the tea. Yeah, and... Um, I remember I didn't even, I don't think, I remember at the time, I don't think I had enough money for a train, so I had to borrow my dad's car. Oh, bless you. Mm. But then I realised the parking was just as much, <laughs> so I was really pissed. I was going to say, that Media City car park was I know, cheap. that Media City car park was about 15 quid, innit? Yes. The train was about 12 at the time from Preston, so. Well, never mind. But yeah, but you would have had to get a taxi or got the tram yeah, or something. True. Yeah. That so, yes. Like, what were you doing five years? What were you Well, doing? I was an uptight, highly strung homosexual, so... That's changed. You'd had a car crash, if I remember. I had had a car you'd crash. Just, I mean... I mean, it, it was, you'd, no, you'd one, a, no one died. You'd had, you'd had a bump, hadn't you? Someone My went car up. was written off, thank you very much. Oh, I just thought someone went up your rear end. No, but well, that was the... <laughs> no. Uh, I was coming back... Is that a different thing? What do you mean? You said, Mike, someone went up your rear end. I've had a white van man go into the back of me before. Oh. Yes. Have you? I have. I bet that hurt. <laughs> Surprisingly, no. No. No, I hardly felt it, but it did damage... <laughs> it did damage the back of the car. Um, but no, I did. I had had a uh, crash come up from Hattie's house for dinner. Oh, right. We were coming back. I hadn't been drinking. You was on the phone to the insurance company, I remember. Oh, what, when we were recording? Oh, you've mm. got a good memory. Anyway, that was the first episode. And I so. remember, if I'm right, I thought we'd do about two or three series. I can remember telling people, we'll only do two series and that'll be enough. Did you? Yeah. Now look at us. <laughs> it still was enough, but we're still going. Yeah. Never mind. Now look, um, our wonderful G&D for Harry Bennett has attempted to collate every single impression that you have ever done. Okay. Where's Over the this? past five years. And I'm just going to wave this at the camera. Look how long this list that Harry has done is. <laughs> oh, my God. Hold that up to the camera I've again. just done a shot that. of that. Yeah, they, they got it. It's, a, it's an entire page of A4. Thank you, Harry. So, uh, so are these in chronological order? I, no, I don't think so. Okay. So there was Mikey the Brit. Like, you read them. Okay. Well, you're going to attempt to do the yeah, accent do after yeah. each one. Right. Okay, here we go. Mikey the Bricklayer from Wakefield. Oh, hello, my little flower pot. How are you? Stop talking about me going into back end here, will you, please? Sarah Hanson. Hello, darlings. Hello. I'm so proud of you. Brian Hanson. Have we got that? Um, I, I have to swear for this one. I feel bad. It's okay. Fucking hell, Sarah. Bloody hell. Why are you always on this podcast? You're always drunk. Yeah. For, for those that are not familiar with Jordan's impressions, none of them are anything like the actual subject of the impression. James Whippity Woo Hanson. Hello, welcome to Whippity Woo, BBC Bristol. <laughs> Woo! You can text in on what you think of the local sewerage at the moment. <laughs> Whippity Woo! <laughs> and um, Emerald has texted in saying that her bins weren't taken out last week. Whippity Woo! They're doing litter on the Bristol um, on the on the Bristol Link Road at the moment, actually. I oh, think they? Find. It's full of litter. Uh, etiquette Granny. William, darling. Wendy North. I'm not finished. Why must you hang out with that oaf and commoner? Jordan, darling. <coughs> <coughs> Can I just say, you need to be a bit quicker on the impressions, otherwise we will be oh, going okay, until sorry. Christmas. Wendy North. I love you, all night. Vicky, who borrows potato feelers. Wendy. <laughs> Can I borrow a potato feeler? 
Calibrated potato peeler. This one has two voices. Producer Ben. Hi, guys. Producer Ben on Talk Sports. All right, girl. How's it going? All right. <laughs> My name's Ben. What's your name? You're a salt, aren't you? All of Ben's colleagues laughing. <laughs> You're a bit of a salt, aren't you? Diego. Oh, what can I say, boys? Happy fifth birthday. If you finish after, I've got a little surprise for you. Cat, mm. Ben's girlfriend. <laughs> I must admit... <laughs> The finish. I did not think you would get to five birthdays. Jordan, we, have, we haven't even done a third of this list. Ben! <laughs> All right, go on. The Finnish slash Danish... The Finnish slash Swedish slash Danish... Woodpecker! Bill Clinton. I did not have a sexual relationship with Monica Lewinsky. Indeed, I did have a sexual relationship with that woman. Deirdre Barlow. Can a cat do it? Can a cat? Wilfred. I can't remember. I that can't one. remember Wilfred. Justin. I can't remember Justin. Producer Bob. I can't remember that one. No, Mickey. Mm. Shane Mendoza. Hello. <laughs> Camp Young Jordan. That's you. Oh yeah, that is me. Come. Oh look at the muck in here. Need a squirt and a wipe. Very good. <laughs> uh, two houses on the hill, Stuart. I like boys. Who's that? Uh, you'll see those two houses on the hill. Mine's the middle one. I'm executive producer. Merchandise man. Yeah, all right. You, yeah, all right. Thing is, your pod- <laughs> your podcast is a bit shit, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Um, wibbly wobbly Boris Johnson. Ah, yeah, wibbly wobbly wobbly wibbly. The, the thing is, the, 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 the wobbly wibbly. Your your former Northern Irish neighbour. James, get in the house, nay. James, <laughs> in the house, nay. Um, f- for interest of time and interest, I'm going to um, cut this. Every accent or impression from a tour announcement. Oh. So that's being the Glaswegians, Mancunians, Georges, Sheffield, Yorkshire and Bristolians. Cheers, Drive. Thank you. <laughs> the Germans. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan South's, uh, Jordan's South London wardrobe fitter who found your high heels. <laughs> I forgot about that this one. This is an excellent list. So I, uh, my wardrobe collapsed and the landlord sent a... Uh, Proper cockney to come and fit it. He went, Yo, mate. <laughs> he went, I just remember, he went, Yo, mate, are these yours? I went, No, they're my girlfriends. <laughs> and then they weren't. No. Uh, no, they weren't. Uh, uh, West London media types? That's just you. Oh. Yeah, so the thing is about podcasts, right? And, and what I like about yours is it just really speaks to working class people like myself. Yeah, all right. Hyacinth Bouquet. Oh, that's you, isn't that it? That is more me. Go on, you do that. I can't do that. That's the other podcast I do. Um, Richard! <laughs> oh, Jonathan can do it very well. Elizabeth! God, I love... Oh, God, we've been on it. Oh, An that. American DJ off WD40. WD40! <laughs> Woo! Woo! WD40! Yeah! 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 Okay, and finally, your accent in the pilot. Or the first I, I, I think that's just the same. It's just a bit high-pitched. Hiya, welcome to El Pasha, no, my boss. You've, come, you've, you've become my brother. Hiya, welcome to... I can't do no, that No, you one. can't do yeah. it. Oh, no, he has actually put here your new homeowner accent. What's that one? I don't... Uh, it's probably like this, now that you have a breakfast bar. <laughs> I don't have a breakfast <laughs> bar. Yes, you have a breakfast bar, don't you? Mm. Or what do you call it? Uh, this is an island. Right. Well, there we go. And well, whilst there was no impression, a special mention goes to Judy Garland, not to be conju- confused with Judith Chalmers. I wish you were here. Oh, yeah, we got Judy Garland and Judith Chalmers confused. Oh, well, well, there you go. How marvellous. Thank you very much for that, Harry. Thanks for um, not watching the bill. It's not even on anymore. No, the bill's been on for years. Yeah, what's on at eight now? I don't know. Harry you... Bikers will be on. They're always on at eight o'clock. Right. And on this, this Sunday, of course, is Project Icon. Y- yeah. Is it this Sunday? Well, that's what you've been yeah. posting. Yes, that's okay. Jordan's new BBC Three show. Check it out. Would you like to look at a few more comments from G&D? That's... Yes, shall we? Okay. Are they up? Well, I hope so. Let's have a look. Um, what? Let's just refresh refresh on the old internet. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, oh uh, someone c- I can't read. Lindsay Liu and someone with a lot of threes in your title on Twitter is playing the Help I Sex with My Boss Live bingo. Who's come up with that? Us? Yes, the production team. Oh, God, you'd be, oh God you'll be up half cut by now. Look at these. Oh, God, you wouldn't be long getting frostbite. What? <laughs> I don't know where that got. That we've, goes to your head, that stuff. We've had lots sure, of pictures. Sure, you would have been long getting frostbite. You're right. Yeah. We've had lots of pictures of picky teas. Uh, I'll rate them after. Oh, let's have a look. Tossed salad and fingered pomegranate, Rebecca Hill on YouTube says. It's an interesting night already. Can we, can we retweet now 
Lottie is boring to pick your tea because that's what I was expecting because there's loads of beige and that's that's a good 8 out of 10. Yeah, you've got me. potato waffles, Lottie. You've got food covered in breadcrumbs. And you've got your red sauce from Aldi and I'm not judging. Uh, fine. Um, Violet Star 26 on YouTube has said, did we manage to get any peanut butter brownies? <sighs> <sighs> We've got brownies. Have we? They're not peanut butter. Oh, for God. I'm just... The only reason why I'm still doing this podcast is because of the... No, I'm joking. I'm joking. That was a stupid joke. Sorry. Cheeky bitch. The only reason that I, like, I look forward to coming in every week and obviously seeing all you guys, but doing... Is they do the best peanut butter brownies where we record um, yeah. in London. I look forward to them all week, like McGuinness. Um, and they don't have them in anymore. Like well, they, they never they, have them. Apparently Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. And they, they come in on Mondays and they go on by Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. And we usually record on a Thursday or Friday, don't we? Erin Yeager, 14. I'm probably saying that wrong, but you're on a road trip listening to us in the car. So hello to you. Um, Jordan's voice... <laughs> Uh, has changed according to uh, M's musical mind, but mine has stayed exactly the same. I'd like to think, actually, my vowels have got a little bit rounder, actually, if you really want, because I, I worked on my diction a lot during lockdown, as you know. So they have got a bit rounder. Uh, Nicole on Instagram posted a picture of her whole family, uh, and uh, sorry, her whole family of pets watching the stream. So hello to all of those. Do you want to read any? Um, Jackie Chesterton asks Jordan, "Can you read the remaining oh, tweets in the we Vicar, didn't do Tom a Vicar Tom? What was Dick Vicar Tom again? What uh, was it? It sounds like a bit like Lord Voldemort. William, yes, darling. No, I, well, yeah, he does. Vicar Tom here. Yes, phoned me over the weekend. William, how nice brownies. to see you. Yeah, now it's come to my attention that you may not be a believer in Jesus, so I would like to get a bit of Jesus <laughs> inside you, darling." And we'll move on <laughs> to... Would you like to be baptised? But Also on the list, you haven't done your Jonathan impression. Oh, I haven't, have I? Go on. Oh, no. That was, yeah, go I'm on. I'm working on that one. It's good. That is the only impression that's any good. <laughs> William, well, you get in touch if you know me. Oh, thank you, William. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. It's funny. Thank you. We'll read out some more later uh, on. John uh, says... I'm literally at work in my office right now in New York City, but I lock my door and close my windows to watch. People are watching us in New York. That's amazing. That's amazing. I've been there. I know you've been there. You went recently. I did, yes. Because I'd been. Well, not because... <laughs> New York is quite a popular holiday destination. Yeah, it was great. To... I'd love to go with you. Really? Any travel agents watching? Yeah, I'd, I think... Why we... didn't we pay for it ourselves? Just, we, you know... We, I'd love... Ooh, where's your D? Um, I'd love to go with you. You could show me around. I could, yes. I could take you to some of the venues. William's got in his house. He's got. Um, what are you going to say? Know, no, all those. You know all those prints that used to get from B and M bargains and stuff. <laughs> William's got in his living room. It's really good. He's got that picture in black and white of those lads having their dinner on that beam. They're not having their dinner. I had them. I loved them. Mm -hmm. I got told they weren't allowed them in the new house. And there was one that was really cool. They had it at uni. Yeah. My mum got it for me. This is New York skyline in black and white. Yes. And in the middle, it's just the taxi, but in yellow. Oh. It looks really cool. Bit of colour splash. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So I'll do a joke of the week, and you do an etiquette etymology. Okay, should okay. we have a jingle? Yes. Here's the jingle. Which one? Oh, oh don't you start oh. now. You said joke of the week. Well, we'll do joke of week first, and then... Oh, you had to press one button. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat. With our Jordan, and if a giggle is what you seek, you're sure to love Jordan's jolly joke of the week. Cha cha cha. I've just learnt the medical name for Viagra, and I'll tell you the punchline after the break. Cue the etiquette etymology of the week. Okay. It's William, William, the etiquette geek. His knowledge, knowledge, is quite unique. He'll give you manners, manners, a subtle tweak. It's time for William's etiquette, etiquette, etymology of the week. Love it. Still needs a cha 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 on the end, just FYI. Um, so, s extra special one because it's our birthday. Have I been a bit cutting in this first episode? No. So, sorry, no, no, no you've been fine. I'll okay. just sort you out in the break, as it were. Um, an extra special. <laughs> You, got, you get wood for five years. <laughs> <laughs> what 
What? <laughs> that's what he said. That's the that's the milestone mineral or whatever. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be loose. That's being lewd. <laughs> Extra special one because it's our birthday. Why do forks have four times? <laughs> oh, for God's sake. I ran this past Ben, the producer, earlier. I said, Why? I've got a good one. Why, Why do forks have four tines? And he went, it's our birthday show and you bring us that. I know. Why couldn't you do... Why, don't we, why do we give people wood for fifth anniversary? Well, I didn't really think it through. <laughs> Clearly. But I'll tell you why forks have four tines if you're still watching after this short break. We've now got a live message from Jess Phillips. <laughs> Oh, woo. That means we're back, does it? Am I shining? It's shining. You haven't yet to see any shine. Wait, how do you do makeup? <laughs> <laughs> don't! Don't! Thank you very much. Are Welcome. We yes, I think so. Welcome back, Welcome GMD. Welcome back! Yeah. Woo! Woo! Well, we'll do that again. <clears throat> Welcome back! This is the Help I Sex and My Boss fifth birthday special. Happy birthday, William. Happy birthday. This live, this live broadcasting thing is a bit tedious, isn't it? It's much nicer when you're pre-recorded. Yeah. I don't know how you do this for two hours, 15 minutes, four days a week, but well done. It's very good. Thank you. You've got to be constantly on it. They said we can't see you. Oh, yeah, they can. They can see us. I'm going to ignore the... I've got the comments coming up. Yeah, don't worry too much about it. Just shine. Be your normal self. Should we do the reveal of Jordan's joke of the week? Yeah. Okay. Um, you get both a joke in the week, a joke of the week, and an etiquette etymology. I just learnt the medical name for Viagra. It's my cocks are flopping. <laughs> That's such a rude joke. Oh. Is it? We've got children watching. No, we don't. God, if you've got your kids watching this, then you are a bad parent. But no judgment. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought that was funny. It's, no, it is. No, it is funny. It's funny. Right, but um, it's if you've not, not yet been for wit, I suggest you go now whilst we find out the reason why forks have four prings. Prings? <laughs> <laughs> Times. What are prongs then? Well, yeah, you can call them prongs, but you've, prings is not a word. Did I ever tell you? Right. I'm not going to do mine, am I? No, no, no. This has got to be the second most painful thing that happened to me. <laughs> I won't do it. What was the first? <laughs> Standing on a plug. Oh, right. <laughs> what right. sort of plug? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. So, the second... <laughs> the, sec the third. <laughs> the second most painful thing that's happened to me, and I'm going to warn you, because when I say this, oh. everyone watching this now will go, oh, you bastard. So, I was emptying... Oh, the, I know what you're going to say. I was emptying yes. the dishwasher... Why well, have you took your headphones off? I can I'm still, still hear you, I know. I was emptying the dishwasher and I was emptying the cutlery and as I, w I missed a fork and one of the prings went right... Tines. One of the tines went right up my fingernail. Right up. It was, honestly, it's the second most painful thing that's happened to me. After standing on a plug. After standing on a plug. Okay. Okay. Well, you should have gone back to the, the good old days of forks because right at the start when they first came in, there were only two prings, or as they're correctly called, tines, on a fork, so you'd have, you'd have fifty percent chance less. Then it went to three, but do you know what food led to the fourth time that we have now on forks being added? Fish. No. Meat. No. Steak. No. Bananas. No. Uh, jelly. N jelly. It's wibbly wobbly, isn't it? With a, no spaghetti. Really? Yes. You see, look, and there is there is that little glint that we get in That Jordan. is really interesting. Yes. So when did we first have spaghetti bolognese? Because it's a British classic, isn't it? I don't... Well, we're not doing the history of spaghetti bolognese. I can do that for you another week okay. if you like, okay? Well, but, don't worry, because tonight, please welcome... Gino De Campo, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you... Oh, no, I can't. Yeah, unless I'm <laughs> doing any, any impression. Um, anyway... 
Royalty, even royal, everyone used to eat with their hands, and forks originally were only used for transferring food, really, from platters onto plates, and then, you, then you'd use your hands. But when spaghetti became quite popular from the Neapolitan court and then onwards, um, they thought, oh, actually, a fourth time might be quite useful to help us eat the spaghetti, and actually then they thought, actually, that fourth time is really useful for everything, and that's why forks have switched to having four. But they used to have three before that they had two, but four now is the correct and most standard uh, number of tines or prings that you see on a fork. And what year was that? In the 17th century. Really? Yeah. When was the 17th century? No, they didn't have spag ball in the 17th no, century. No, they didn't have spaghetti bolognese, but they had spaghetti. Well, they might have had spaghetti bolognese. Oh, it's they yet... didn't have sp 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 spaghetti in the spaghetti. <laughs> Did he's kicking him? Take... Yeah. They didn't have spaghetti in them days. No. Did well, they? No, they did have spaghetti, yes. There's there's historical evidence. But bol the bolognese bit, I'm not sure about. Okay. Maybe they just stuck to carbonara. Right. Shall we... Was that vaguely interesting? That was really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. That was really interesting. William Hansen, everybody. <laughs> that was really good. Thank you. Well, that's... Stick at it, because one of these days, this etiquette malarm might work out for you. Don't pass on your own career advice <laughs> and repackage it for me. Shall we go to some listeners' questions? Uh, yes, and look, if you have any dilemmas uh, that you would like us to answer live during this uh, live stream, please feel free to email help at sexwithmyboss.com, pop them in the comments wherever you're watching this, and we can answer them. That's what we do. I'm doing more looking into the camera. I know, camera. but I think you're you going get... bog-eyed. It freaks me out because you're speaking to me but looking over my shoulder. I'm not. I'm addressing the listener or the viewer. I can't. What? Also, we've got to talk about this. This. No, because this, this wire is really irritating. It, yeah, it's always it, irritating. Just keep me. what right from now until the end of the episode. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Just see how many times he does this casually. Right, let's go to some listeners' problems well, and dilemmas. This one is from Becky Tobin. Uh, William and Jordan, do you have any tips on how to help your son recover from playing Never Have I Ever with his mother at your Help I Sex My Boss London show? Oh. Oh, wow. So could you just explain Never Have I Ever for so, those that aren't familiar? Well, we usually on tour, um, we start with a game of Never Have I, Never Have I Ever. <laughs> it's really kicking. It is really William. kicking. I've had the oil slick. And it's basically where we'll say Never Have I Ever. And if you've done it, you take a sip. Most people know how it works. So give us an example. Never have I ever vabbed. Well, we haven't. It's fine. So what would we do? Because we haven't got vaginas. Right. Thanks for clearing. Well, I might. <laughs> have you dabbed? Have I dabbed? What? At like... Like that? <laughs> That's a dab. Yeah. Well, there we go. I've just done it. Yeah, but with your... With my... Could, me... Could boys do it with their willies? Oh! I... Wow. Wabbed. Willied. Willied. Wabbed. Willied. <laughs> okay. I suppose men could do it like underneath the balls. That gets I don't it, like it? where this conversation is anyway, going. Um, so what was the, if, is it, what was the problem? Um, never have I ever. Uh, yeah. we, we were saying never have I ever. We were explaining never have I ever. It's one of those where if you've done something really stupid in front of your mum and dad where you're drunk, you might have told them an embarrassing story that you probably shouldn't have told your parents or... You might have done something. You just you've got to pretend it never happened. Yeah. Because what's the most embarrassing thing you've done with your mum drunk? I I don't think I've ever got really tiddly with my parents. Have you not? I'm going on holiday with them for two weeks. Yeah. Though, however, so that might change. We that you see my Insta stories from them in Spain recently. Oh. They were they my mum and dad were humping each other whilst dancing. Did you see that? I was like, absolutely oh. not. We didn't mention it there, actually. Never happened. No. They were doing. Um, that's the way. Uh, 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 uh. I was like, right, we're not umping. <laughs> we're not dry umping. Thanks for clearing that one up. Um, but no, I, th I think, yeah, I, going back to Becky Tobin's question, I just wouldn't mention it. Yeah, and, and um, should probably don't come... No, I'd say don't come to one of our live shows with your, pa with your parents or your sons or daughters. Not unless they're very open-minded. Yeah, just make sure you've got that sort of relationship. But put it this way, would you have watched Football as Wives together when you... That was back in the day. Was that was that a bit racy? Oh yeah. Okay. Do you remember footballers' wives? Um, lost after Rumia. But basically, <laughs> I, I used to love footballers' wives. My mum did used, you? And I was about, I think, I was about fourteen, fifteen. When right. Was, so my mum used to let me stay up to watch it, but they were, they were. There was one scene on a private jet that can. So I stopped watching it. With my mum. Same with Game of Thrones. Let's cut that. 
Would you watch Game of Thrones with your mum and dad? If you'd watch Game of Thrones with your mum and dad, come and watch our live shows. Okay. Yeah. Fine. If we ever do any again. Uh, this is from uh, LL, whoever LL is. Hi, boys. Love the show. My neighbour asked me earlier if I knew who was in the car parked outside last night. I said no. Neighbour said, that's funny, as they came out of your front door. I died of embarrassment and coughed to the fact that it was a booty call. How do I get over the embarrassment? Best regards, LL. Um, Why the heck are they asking you? Yeah, just say... Your house? Yeah, it's your house, and just say you had a friend over. We're all adults, LL. Yes. Cool, Jay. <laughs> LL. <laughs> Is that another The rapper. Oh, right. Yeah, it was in um, a shark film as well. Yeah, don't be... There's not wrong with having a boot, and good on you that you can have someone on tap. <laughs> <laughs> get get, not a, get not it a on tap. Pint of Guinness. Yeah, but it's just like uh, you know how booty calls always start, aren't you? No. Do you know how to start a booty call? No. Right. It's, there's, I, this is what I've been told. Yes. You basically start a booty call. There's an art to starting it. You've got to get the message. Should we do a role play? You you guys will know, won't you? And you'll know if you're watching a booty call. And it's they're all happily in relationships. No, 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 I know, but I'm just been told this. You know how a booty call starts. Well, the should message. we role play? No, because it's like this. So it's, <laughs> you, you just message, and this is this is how a booty. Every booty call message starts with this. Hey, I have lots of people that text me that at one in the morning. One, well, admittedly, no. That's how it starts. Hey, and you see it, and you think, oh, for God's sake. Go on then, I'll be rounding off, hour. That's so I've been told. <laughs> so I've been told. That's how booty call starts. Okay, good. Well, that's nice. Um, well, uh, don't be ashamed of that. Good on you. No, you you do you. We've all got needs. Um, okay. <laughs> this one is from M and C from North. Ha oh no, this is from a non. I'll move on. John's just text. He's a message saying it's always the "Are you up?" text as well. Are you up? Yeah. Are you up? You awake? Uh, this is from Tom. Oh, this is a this is a yeah. It is a one. you up. Everyone's saying it's you up. Okay, dear William Jordan and producer Ben, this is my second piece of correspondence to you, having written to you a few years ago when I stood next to William and Mikey on the tube, sharing a handrail. <laughs> Today I have a new dilemma for you. Supposedly we were having an argument. That's what you said. <laughs> you were. I don't think you we were. were. We never argue. That time, uh... I live in West London and my landlord doubles as the cleaner. Okay. The problem is uh, they aren't very good. I've been living here for some years now. They aren't very good. They aren't very sorry, good. Sorry, sorry. Um, I've been living here for some years now and frequently find myself re-cleaning after their monthly visits. My house is generally very clean and tidy, so there isn't ever much for them to do. But they always seem to create more of a mess than they clear. Uh, on their latest visit, the mixture of various cleaning chemicals filled the bathroom with a powerful smell of chlorine. Chlorine. Uh, whilst fumigating the space, I noticed that they had left some of the cleaning products on the side. It turns out that one of the reasons the cleaning had been so unsuccessful is she had been cleaning everything with Pledge. <laughs> pledge? Thank you. <laughs> on your shoes? Whilst I understand... <laughs> For anyone new watching, that will make no sense. <laughs> what... Pledge? That's Wendy's impression of... William. Uh, whilst I understand and appreciate the applications of Pledge normally on Jordan's shoes, she has been using it to clean everything, from kitchen counters to the shower and the yeah, bath. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. It gives D it a shine. N no, darling. No. <laughs> Don't darling me. Um, they have smeared copious amounts of Pledge everywhere. Putting the Pledge to one... How many times have we said Pledge? Putting... Could you not delete the document whilst I'm reading? Because that dilemma's gone now. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Sorry. No, but it just disappeared. <laughs> They're trying. Yes, my patience. <laughs> Join the union, the lot of you. Join the union. Fight the power. Off pod. From kitchen counters to shower and the bath, they have smeared copious amounts of pledge everywhere. Putting the pledge to one side, they haven't been doing a very good job for some years now, so my dilemma is, do I say something? I end up having to re-clean large parts of the house after they come. It would have been easier if they hadn't come at all. I don't want to hurt any feelings and have considered confiscating the pledge, but I would be grateful for your advice. Best wishes... Best... <laughs> <laughs> Best wishes, Tom. Tom. Like, if they're using wood pledge, yeah, but if it's multi-surface pledge, then what's the problem? Because it's for multi-surfaces. I would get rid of the pledge. I'd hide it. Right, can I just say, mm. and I am I'm really annoyed, because I, what you want to get, Tom, is star drops. I've talked about this, Anna. It's vinegar spray, 
Yeah, it's called Star Drop. Just, just tell you what, go and buy some white vinegar from a shop and stick it in a spray bottle. No, because that's, that's just, all that is. Is it? Yes. Well, I got some Star Drops and they've designed a new bottle. So even though I've got three bottles already, I thought I'll get the new bottle because it looks really cool. So, I, excuse me, I ordered mm. two bottles of Star Drops. It's really good. It makes everything pristine. And two of the old You're being bottles. Sponsored. And two of the old bottles turned up. Oh, right. So now I've got five old bottles, but I want the really cool. They're, they're a bit like the Method bottles. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, that's, wow. that's yeah. Wow. That's great. Cheers, chance. guys. Thanks. That's the sort of thing that Jordan was referring to earlier that would be cut from a Yeah, that would have been cut. Yeah. yeah. I can save that sort of chat for when I'm on radio too. <laughs> stuff like Next that. week. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, then the pink stuff's good. Yeah. I love a bit of the pink. Do you like the pink stuff? I love the pink stuff. It's good. I do. Yeah. It's really I good. I rub for it your... all over my kitchen counter. It's good for your hub, the pink stuff. Yeah. What? You're subtle, well, aren't you? Ben, I'm ben, there trying to talk. He's going, Ben's what? <laughs> he's wafting his. <laughs> he's wafting his 13 inch like Mick Jagger. <laughs> which, which one do you want me to do? Oh, yeah, Domestos as well. William Hansen. Christ the Could you just speak and tell me which one you'd like me to do? No, that was, someone asked for the jingle, so I just wanted to play it. Oh, I well. see. Right. So it's now played. Oh, don't cry. No, Stop crying. Okay. I bet Hugh Edwards is shitting himself. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Anonymous. Hi, boys. A few weeks ago, our daughter, age nine, was going to go to the park with her friend. Me and my partner thought this was a great idea to have some quick sexy time. Unfortunately, she forgot her coat. <laughs> It was only when we heard her feet thundering down the stairs we realised she heard what was a we-have-an-empty-house type of shenanigans. So our question is, what do we say when she asks what the weird noises are when we think she probably knows what's going on? We love you lots, Anonymous. You do what we told our Bradley. Mm. Naked wrestling. (laughs) So do they. Does he still believe that, though? I hope not. He's got a kid on the way. Oh, but, right, fine. Okay. Oh, is that... Am I allowed to say? Cut that, actually. Oh, no, yeah. It's, well, no, it's... He's oh, put it's it on Instagram. Yeah, on his Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's... Uh, you just say naked wrestling, or we were just play fighting, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think... Did you ever have the birds and the bees chat with your mum and dad? I had the bees and the bees. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. How very progressive. Yes. Did, did you... Because no. my dad never sat us down. I got all mine from Ashley Granger, who lived down the road from us. Ashley Granger? Wasn't he on Coronation Street? No. And, and he used to, like, he just knew everything about it. Did he? Was he older? No, same age. Yeah, okay. I, I can't say I had ever... Yeah. Did you ever catch him on the dad? No. Did you not? No. Neither did I. Yes, you did. No, well, I didn't. you were basically told to leave the house, weren't you? No, there was that. That was I was about twenty eight then. Oh, fine. Yeah, when I was that came was on, when I got ago. sent home from school, we right streff cough or whatever it's called. The what? Streff cough, whatever it is. A streff cough? No, not streff cough. Oh God, no, that's really bad. I had croup. Right. It's like a really croupy cough. I used to get it when I was younger. Okay. I got sent home. Um, Gosh. Never, nothing ever happened. It was all fine. Okay, good. Um, this is from Ryan. Dear William Jordan, EPB and Diego, I've been single for quite some time now, now so long in fact, that it's sadly affecting me mm. in a way that is making me think there's something wrong with me. No. My main concern, however, is the fact that I'm still living with my parents uh, as living on your own is very expensive. My question is, do you think this is reasonable grounds for potential partners not to pursue a relationship or to judge me because I'm still at home with my parents? Hope you managed to read this out. I'm really enjoying the live stream. All the best, Ryan. Ryan, uh, no. First of all, cost of living crisis and everything. There's nothing wrong with living at home with parents. Nope. And people definitely live at home with the parents um, until they're a lot older than back in the day. Because you used to be able to get an house for 25p back in the day. Well, you could. You get a mortgage Ooh, for 7 get you, get you with well, the politics. it bugs me. My mum and dad were like, oh, we had an house at your age. Yeah, because they were about 24 quid then. And Wow. Yeah, well, you know what it is. So it, there's nothing wrong with living at home now as because um, a bit older. But... You lived, if, you lived at home. I lived at home and I moved back home and, and stuff like that. But also, Ryan, as well. Um, I've lost my train of thought right there. Oh, I was going to say something really nice there. And people will say this to you a lot. Love will hit you when you least expect it. It Aww. genuinely will. Like, if, if you're on all the apps and stuff or you're going on dates and it's just not right, I promise you, out of nowhere, it'll just come and hit you. And when you're least expecting it, genuine. 
So yeah, that's my advice. So just keep doing what you're doing and don't move out for it. That's and made if, me feel really and if, and warm if somebody, inside. And if somebody didn't want to be with you because you live with your parents, then... Uh, yeah, I would say, Ryan, I wouldn't mention... Oh, it that's the... Ryan 56. <laughs> I'm joking, isn't yeah. it? I'm joking. I wouldn't mention it on your first date. Why? Because I don't think it's relevant. Live at home. Yeah, but they want to get to know you. Live at home, mum and dad. Do you want top bunk or bottom bunk? <laughs> I had bunk beds. Were you top or bottom? Bunk beds. Right. Depends who were home that weekend. Good. Um, this is from Kimberly Hermit. Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kimberly. This is from Kimberly Herbert. How many times has Jordan written his name on that piece of paper now? You have written it a lot. No, I haven't. Yes, I've, you have. I'm making notes so I don't lose my trail of thought. Right. You, that's all you do do. I put naked wrestling. When you least expect it, you up. Also, hey, you awake. Yeah. I was unemployed living in my parents' box room. That's for the notes I've made. Fascinating. That's right. How many, do we, how many more do you want me to do? A couple more? Okay, this is from Olivia. Dear William Jordan and EPB, I'm a student psych physiotherapist, and I'm currently on a community... <laughs> And I'm currently on a community therapy placement. I visited a patient a couple of weeks ago for a routine therapy session. This was fine. The problem was the patient's husband. I watched him pick a sausage out of the dog's bowl, which I had previously watched the dog eat out of, put the sausage into his mouth and bite into it in sizeable chunks. Who's Re this? The, the husband of the client. Regurgitating it back into the dog's bowl. My eye was twitching in horror <laughs> as he... <laughs> This is... I'm sorry. No, it's not normal. I'm just, I'm just doing the read. This is worse than fucking igloo-ing. Well, we haven't finished yet. My eye was twitching in horror as he said to me, Oh, we spoil them, don't we? I simply smiled on in absolute disgust. How do I approach a situation where someone is being totally disgusting but I'm required to be professional? Well, look at the last five years of this podcast. Thank you for always putting a smile on my face during my commutes to work. Olivia. Um, so Shaz just messaged saying, I think Ben's got a feather up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him on to come say hello soon, don't worry. Yeah. Um, well, so how would, you address, how would you address someone who's regurgitating a dog sausage and then putting it back in the... <laughs> I just tell them it's disgusting. That's, go, Ooh, that's a bit disgusting. Who would do that in front of... Maybe the dog's really but, ill. But I... Well, I think it's the husband that's really ill. I would say probably it is... I do get Olivia's point of view that she is there. She's in, She's a guest in the home on a sort of a client um, supplier basis. So you can't really say much. But people are weird. I mean, if we've, if we've learned nothing from the last five years is that it all goes on. Yeah, that's grim. It all goes but on. But I probably would say nothing. I, I'd probably not say anything. And then just write into your favourite podcast and see what they think of it. Um, okay, final letter. Okay. This is from Anonymous. Hello, William and Jordan. I come to you with a dilemma that is troubling me greatly. I have a friend who, despite not being actual royalty, goes by the name of Lady Sadie. Okay, I have thoughts. Uh, you see... What, what are your thoughts of people that use the name, like, Lady C or... It's ridiculous. Like, some people call themselves the Colonel. Well, that's ridiculous, unless they were one. I think they're on an ego trip, personally. Mm -hmm. Also, however, I would say anonymous, Lady Sadie doesn't imply their royalty. It would imply their aristocracy, but that's a minor detail. You see, our good friend Sadie is a fan of day drinking and often starts these sessions with McDonald's breakfast. I have no issue with this. You've got to line the stomach and all. However, on more than one occasion later on in the day, Lady Sadie has produced a cold leftover McDonald's cheesy bacon flatbread bread from the breakfast <laughs> menu shush, with her clutch bag and proceeded to tuck in as though this ghastly item is revitalising her soul. No, they're fine cold. I always get them cold. Keep them wrapped up. It's nice. The flatbreads, they're, they're quite low calorie as well if you 
Okay. Watching what good. Yeah. Now, dear. You can make them at home as well, just as God. Sorry. Okay. okay. Now, dear lady Sadie feels that this is perfectly acceptable, particularly as it fits so perfectly in her clutch bag. Wow. So tell me, is it even acceptable to A, eat a cold takeaway, and yeah. B, carry said takeaway in your clutch for eight hours? Many thanks in advance, anonymous. Yeah. I got told once before you get on a plane now, I always get a little sandwich and put it in your bag. In case the plane stops and stuff. And the one time I didn't do it, I got stuck on tarmac for two and a half hours, starving I was. They wouldn't even give me a water. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. And I think it's quite classy to put it in a clutch bag, if anything. I think it's weird. Would you... You don't want a smelly clutch. No, you don't. You've had McDonald's before, haven't you? I have had a McDonald's. There's no secret of that. But I haven't put it in my clutch bag. I've stopped having McDonald's breakfast. Have you? Yeah, I was having them every weekend. They stopped paying you? No. It's just, yeah. But you can make those little flatbreads at home with cheese and bacon. Just as good. Yeah. Okay. Well, but that's, that's good to know. Fine putting it in your clutch bag. What a, what yeah. a nice one to end on. There we go. Um, we've got various things to do. We've um, got a couple. We, we've not got long now. Please, if you're flagging, stick with us. <laughs> I'm flagging. Oh, yeah. Um, before we go to our um, uh, birthday cake. Oh, we've got cake. Well, we've got, we've got a cake of sorts. Um, oh, look, and that television monitor is <laughs> going to turn itself off over there. Oh. It says auto power off. Oh, I'm going to That's turn nice. It. Even, it, even the monitor's bored. <laughs> no, no, it's not touchscreen. <laughs> you have to use a remote control, which Ben is finding now. There we go. That's okay. Good. Um, we've got... We've got a song that a June Diva has composed. Oh, really? Now, recently... I've got a couple of surprises for you as well. Have you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Recently, uh, we've been talking a lot about potato peelers. Okay. And so this is the song. I don't know what the name of the June Diva is. Robbie J. Robbie J. Robbie J. Mm -hmm. has written a potato peeler song. Here it is. in a disarray. Her family needed feeding, she had a bag of spuds. She served the cupboards and the drawers amongst a place of mugs. The answer to her problem came to a sobbing head. She ran into her neighbour's house and this is what she said. Oh Wendy, oh um, can I borrow your potato peeler? She said, Wendy, oh um, can I borrow your potato peeler? This is great. She said, Wendy, oh, uh, can I borrow your potato peeler? I went to solve the problem and she can help you too. Because when you're feeling down and out and don't know what to do, you'll always find a friend in need if you can learn the song. Just find yourself a crowd, take a deep breath and be strong. Because there's a G and Diva who'll always be about. Their answer you, I promise you, if you just simply shout, hey, Wendy. Your potato peeler. Hey, Wendy. Can I borrow your potato peeler? Get up for Robbie, Whoa. everybody. Whoa. Sorry, nobody's clapping because we're all faffing about trying to sort that <laughs> pissing telly out. Just press OK. <laughs> yes, but the, the receptors, they've built this studio and the receptor is behind Oh, the black. great. So we're going to have to pay for it to get brought out. Yes, to turn the TV off, basically. Ben, come on. What's it? Oh, Ben's going to. Oh, Ben's wow. turned the TV off. Now you've turned the telly off. Now it's back. Hey. Hooray. Hey. Well done. Well Produ done. Producer Ben, everyone. Producer Ben, everyone. Lovely. Right, how'd you get rid of this? Now, press skip. Oh, it's like watching your dad trying to get <laughs> freaking skagged. Well done. Well Fine. done. Good. Right. Should we do a, Should we do birthday cake? Pardon? Should we do birthday cake? Yeah, let's cake? do birthday cake. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, do, do we have your lighter? Uh, we need to... People are saying, by the way... Just to have a look at the songs. People are just loving that. Uh, someone says your, your mics need to be in the shape of potato peeler. Jordan, you should play that song on Radio 1. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Carry yes, on. you should. Loads of people are loving Put it that. on introducing or something. That would be good. Get you. Yeah, I know. Right, come on, right. Ben. Have you got a lighter? No, you've got a yeah, lighter because I don't smoke. Um, are we going to play that clip as well? Yeah, right. Come on. We'll do... Stop there like one. Now, Ben, Burton's come on. Gummies. You can, you can on. join in. Here we go. Say hello to everyone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a kid's TV presenter. This one's upside down. How oh, is it? Like... Ben, come and stand around here so we don't... I'm not going to blow on it. 
because I've got I'm full of cold, so you can blow it out. Because I'll just get cold everywhere. Who made these brownies? The downstairs. Uh, oh, they're from downstairs. They're just not the peanut butter. Ones. Oh bollocks! <laughs> they're just the regular ones. Should we have a sing song? Oh, I've done this one. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, you've got to join in at home. You've got to join. Please join in at home with us if you Hi, are. Hi guys. Oh, it's too late for that. Yeah. <laughs> Five. Right. Okay. After three. Happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday to us. us. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday, dear Sexton. Happy birthday to you. Oh, you've got a good blow on you. Thank there you. There you go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Should we cut them and... Jordan's desk. No. Cut them, but don't give any to the team. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm joking. You're so desperate for brownies. Um, well, that's marvellous. How lovely. Also, I just want to remind you as a little yeah. birthday treat. Do yes. you remember a couple of years ago, and not many people seen this, but a couple of years ago, we actually got a video message from Sarah Hansen. Well, this is for your for our live stream last time, wasn't it? Yeah, and a couple of um, years ago. Uh, thanks to everyone that's leaving messages saying happy birthday. We do have now. If you've never seen this before, this was a message sent from our, our last live stream from Sarah Hansen herself. Oh, it's on here. Oh, Lord. Champagne over What? what? Nice lady. Who is it? What do you want? What? Oh, must I now? I'm having my beauty time, darling. Give it here. A lot slimmer then. Glasses. Hurry up! Hurry up! Open them. Trying to look beautiful, darling. <laughs> Cigarette! Cigarette! Thank you, darling. Hello, darling. Mummy here. <laughs> Wishing you luck with your... your cast pod, darling. Mummy's sending all her love, darling. Wishing you luck. I know it's going to be a success, darling. I know from the day you was born, you was going to be a success, and everything you shall do will be a success, darling. I know. <laughs> look, Mummy's drinking champagne for you, darling. Cheers, darling, to your cast pot That's and to awesome. you and all your success, darling. That's awesome. <laughs> Cheers, darling. Wishing you all the luck in the world. And James, call me, darling. I've not heard from you in ages. Mummy misses you, darling. It's kind of possible. That's <laughs> bother again. The message is not for James. What's it for then, darling? For William. Are we on darling. camera? I thought it was for my James. And that is as well. Hello, William, darling. Mummy here. Just wishing you luck. Just wishing you luck with your podcast, darling. Mummy said it's right. Podcast, darling. <laughs> is it cast pod, darling? Is it cast pod, darling? Anyway, mummy's wishing you luck. <laughs> Goes on a bit, doesn't it? Hope you have a wonderful time, darling. If anybody's watching this, you should really watch my James, darling. Or listen to him on BBC Radio Bristol's, darlings. He's on on Mondays, he's on on Tuesdays, he's on on Wednesdays, darlings, he's on on Thursdays and Fridays, darlings. In the morning, darlings, he's very funny. BBC Radio Bristol's, darlings. Anyway, William, yes. Good luck, darling. Brian, bring up another bottle of champagne, darling. Another one? Fucking hell, that's two today, Sarah. Ah, oh, shut up. I'm celebrating for my James, darling. You'll never like to see me celebrate. Jeeves. Get James on the phone. I need to speak to my baby, darling. But there's a comment there saying, <laughs> William, your mum needs to shave. <laughs> and the, I remember at the time, Ben said, just do a quick one minute video. Yeah. Do a quick one minute video. And that was about two and a half minutes. I'm it, cringing. It was, uh, it was special. My mother is nothing like that, we should just point out. We should do, uh, yeah. I've still got that commode somewhere. Commode? What's it's it not a commode. That's, that's a portable loo. What's that? Kimono. Oh, so... <laughs> I've still got that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think, I think we've... we thought we'd give you that. I think we've peaked. I would just like to say thank you.
a few thank yous. Firstly, thank you very much to you, Gene Devers, who have listened to us. As I said at the start, whether you've listened for five minutes or for the whole five years or anything in between, thank you very much. Without you, we would not be here and we would be nothing. And we owe it all to you. Yeah, definitely. Um, over the past five years, some of you have been with us from the start. Some of you over the past couple of years. Some have joined us six months ago. But genuinely, if you've, you've listened and you've told someone about us, then we really really do appreciate it we started this podcast as just two mates who thought we'd get a few series out of it and now something to fill the time yeah and now it's genuinely the highlight of the week coming in here and recording this with you um so. i would like to say thank you to you jordan north for allowing your very busy schedule now for finding time don't be daft for help i sexed my boss which is much appreciated i'd like to say thank you to you as well and also to it says here ben no, seriously, <laughs> to Ben, <laughs> Stu, Jack, Alex, Tia, Ollie, Ollie, Maz, yeah, Paul, anyone who works on Help I Sex to My Boss, whether it's on the podcast, all our lovely publishers at Penguin Random House, for the book, for Christian, for Stephen, for everyone that is potentially at extremities involved in Help I Sex to My Boss. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, we, who else? Do, and everyone at Audio Always. And Indeed. But mainly to you, our wonderful Gene Davis. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Cheers. Here's to the next five years. <laughs> As always, remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Mondays and share us on your socials all week. Um, or you can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com. You can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexandmyboss. Get a bit worked up there. Or you can write to William, who you. promises a handwritten reply in his own letter to paper. The address is on the website, sexofmyboss.com. Shall we go to the pub? Yes! Shall we go to the pub? Shall we go and have a pint? Around the pint?